Hello everyone, this is another Black Conservative. I'm Ryan Bolin. Thank you all for joining me. So, last night, a representative from Illinois was on MSNBC and during an interview where he made the accusation or the assertion, if you will, that pastors in America are failing their congregation. Why? Because many members in their congregation, according to this representative, are equating former President Donald Trump to Jesus. Sounds pretty heavy, huh? Well, let's get into this article and let's read the I'm going to read the transcript of what this man supposedly said. And then I'm going to give you my opinion of what this all is, uh, what this really is all about. Do we really? I mean, is that really true? It's a strong accusation, don't you think? But let's see. Representative Adam Zing Kinzinger said Tuesday on MSNBC's Alex Wagner tonight that he believed pastors in America are failing their congregations because many Christians are equating former President Donald Trump to Jesus. Strong accusation, right? Okay, let's see what he has to say. Ken Zinger said, I've come to believe over the last year that people more than even fearing death, we're such a tribalistic people that they fear being kicked out of their tribe. Okay, I, 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 I kind of agree with that. America has, large in part, particularly since the 60s, become a tribalistic society. You have the left, you have the right, you have this group, you have that group. We have become a tribalistic society, particularly since the 1960s, so-called counter-revolution. Okay? But he goes on to say, so you accept anything because now republicanism, conservatism, Trumpism becomes your identity and so you're going to stay. I find that odd that he says this, you know, <laughs> conservatism and Trumpism becomes your identity. And so you're going to stay. I find that odd that he says that he's but he's right to some degree. I have seen uh, people. I mean, all out for Trump, but I'm not going to go into the detail. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to go into the detail of what I believe this is all about after I read this man's comments. OK, so let's get let's go further. Let's go further into this. He continued, I'm going to say this as a Christian myself, the pastors, many pastors in this country are failing their congregations, not even just by, you know, pushing a kind of Trumpism from the pulpit, but even refusing to talk about how bad it is, how corrosive it is. You have people today that literally, I think they might not say it, but in their heart, they equate Donald Trump with the, with the person of Jesus Christ. Let me stop right here before I read the rest of what he has to say. He says, I think they might not say it, but in their heart, they equate Donald Trump with the person of Jesus Christ. You think they may have not said it, but you think it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but what evidence you have that they're equating Donald Trump to Jesus Christ? I don't know. But anyway, this is what he this is his accusation. OK, so to them, if you even come out against this amazing man, Donald Trump, which I mean, obviously he's quite flawed, which he was what every president was and is. You are coming out against Jesus, against their Christian values. When you go after their religion, that violates the depth of who they are. And I've been kicked out of my tribe and that's OK. That's the end of that transcript there. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below and you can read it on your own free time. But here's the deal. Um, first of all, I want to go back to this old idea of tribalism. We have been fractured as a society since the 1960s counter revolution movement. And America has become extremely fractured and you have this group over here, you have that group over there. We are extremely uh, fractured and we are very divided. But at the same time is going back to this whole idea of Trumpism and the pastors failing their congregations because they're equ equating uh, Donald Trump to Jesus Christ. I find that interesting for one, because when Barack Obama in his first term, when he first got elected, he was praised as the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I don't, I don't know, I think it was, this was Time Magazine or one of those magazines, they had a picture of him with a halo over his head. And Oprah Winfrey was on record as saying he's the second coming. Now, when she says he's the second coming, oh, come on now, every Christian that knows the Bible knows what that's talking about. But no one hardly objected to it. 
Former President Obama got all kinds of praise and he's the one and he's a this and he was seen as a Christ figure as well. But no one hardly said anything about that. But here, all of a sudden, this representative from Illinois says that these pastors in America are failing their congregation because many of the members of their congregation supposedly is equating Donald Trump to Jesus. First of all, he hasn't really described that in any detail. I mean, that's what you think. I mean, are they really saying that or what? What I believe the issue is, is that the people are not so much comparing Donald Trump to Christ and what that's not what it is. What I believe that they're doing is that Donald Trump's policies, at least for the most part, was more conducive to their Christian values. And that's why they admire him. But the other reason why I believe that they admire Donald Trump, apart from his uh, policies, is because of his strength. All the persecution and, ver and hate that he was receiving was incredible. And yet he stood his ground. That's a man. And I think a lot of Christians and non-Christians alike that were on the conservative side admired that quality about him. They knew he was flawed, but his policies was more conducive to what they personally believed would be best for the, what they valued. OK. This whole idea of Trumpism, uh, that's a whole nother story, because I personally don't wear hats, Donald Trump hats and Donald Trump shirts. I personally don't wear those type of things because that's just not how I am. I wear hats with like I have your Patriot Patriot hat and, and, and one hat I bought from um, Anthony Brown Logan that says I digress, you know, just to help out other conservatives and so forth. I buy those type of things, but I don't really buy shirts that necessarily or clothing that necessarily represent a particular person. Now, I may buy books that represent particular individuals, of course, because I'm, I'm a reader. As you see in the background there, I have a book, uh, uh, a biography written by a man by the name of Jason Riley, who is another conservative, African-American conservative, who wrote a biography on um, Thomas Sowell. OK, and you I can see clearly the picture behind me there, but uh, whom I admire. I admire Thomas Sowell's in depth, his mind, but I don't worship Thomas Sowell and I don't agree with everything you say, to be quite frank with you. OK. Um, this whole idea of Trumpism, I think that 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 it can go into get into the realm where you begin to admire the person to the point where you look to that person as a savior. But the same thing could be said about Obama. Everybody looked to him as a savior and he was in office for eight years. And what has he actually done for Americans during the eight years for all Americans? I'm not just talking about the gays and the transgenders. I'm talking about all Americans. What have he done that's really helpful? And please don't mention Obamacare or whatever they want to call it now. Please don't mention that. You may have a few people that benefited from it. But generally speaking, all I'm hearing from that is negativity. So let's come up with something a little bit more uh, uh, conducive to what's helping American people in general and not just Obamacare. Because there don't seem to be a lot of care going on with Obamacare with a lot of people. OK. But the same thing is with, with Obama. You know, people, people deitize de him. They put him on a pedestal. The left and perhaps the right put him on a pedestal. Because he was the first African-American president. <laughs> but he was one of the most liberal. Nobody paid attention to that. Nobody paid attention to policies. Policies is what dictate the course of the country. I believe that that's what dictates the course of the country. I don't believe that it's the, it's the personality of the person. Now, the personality of the particular president or senator or, or representative or whatever may have some influence because it determines whether or not they have charisma or whether or not they don't have charisma. So it may have some influence, but it is not the charisma of the person necessarily that should be focused on. What the focus should be, it's, it's helpful, but what the focus should be on is the policies of that individual, because it's the policies of that individual that's going to dictate the course of the country or the course of the state or the course of the city. That's what's going to that's what's going to matter. You might like the person or you might dislike the person, 
But what about their policies? Are there policies, policies that you personally value? Are there policies that's going to help the country as a whole, the state as a whole, or the city as a whole? That's what matters. And so this whole idea that this representative is talking about, well, you know, uh, uh, Christian pastors are failing their congregation. I really don't even know what you mean by that. What are they supposed to do? Get up in the pool pit and say, well, you know what? You people need to stop worshiping Donald Trump because you admire someone doesn't mean you worship them. You might admire, for example, Donald Trump has a lot of charisma and that's why a lot of people are drawn to him. He's very charismatic, way more so than, than dying, dying Joe Biden. Joe Biden can barely talk. He has no charisma, no strong leadership qualities whatsoever. And I'm quite sure everybody knows that. Quite sure we're going to get some people that say, yes, he do, man. No, no, he doesn't. He does not have any kind of real charisma at all. Okay, so we, we need to talk about that. Donald Trump has that charisma. But in addition to the charisma was his policies. And I think that a lot of Christians were willing to vote for him because even though his lifestyle in the past hadn't been the best lifestyle. He was a player. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, he was rich. But being rich is not a sin. OK, that's not a sin. I don't know what. That's a whole nother story. People, we've been so conditioned to hate rich people. It's crazy. But anyway, but he had a lot of money. He had a lot of women and so forth. So that was something that wasn't really conducive to what a lot of Christians felt the leaders should be. But they had a choice between either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, you want to say, rather. They had a choice between the two. And most people knew Hillary Clinton. And Christians also knew her, her, her policies and what she was willing to push. And so they said, no, nah, we'd rather pick the lesser of the evil. That's what that was all about. Because his policies was more in line with what they personally valued. It wasn't all this Trumpism and walking around, rah, 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 and you know, walking around with his shirts on and all that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I have no problem with that at all. Okay. But I look at policies, 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 policies. And I think that that's what matters the most, not just the charismatic personality of the individual. Let me end this video on this note. A person in any particular political party that you, that you representing, Democrat, Republican, independent, whatever. I think that it's, it's important for people to go beyond the, 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 the personality of the political figure and look at the policies. I believe is, 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 is important, extremely important to look at their policies because this person can be extremely charismatic Real good with talking, real good with getting everybody revved up, but their policies are the most destructive policies in the country. I'll end the video on this. As a minister, I believe that there's coming, as a minister, and as a person who studies Bible prophecy, I believe that there is an individual that's going to come on the scene that's going to be the last world dictator. Christians commonly refer to him as the Antichrist. He's given many names in the Bible, he's given the beast. The little horn, the prince that shall come, the, the Assyrian, he's given all these different titles. But he will be, based on my understanding and my studies, will be the very incarnation of Satan in human flesh. He will be the last world dictator and the worst world dictator in all of human history. Now, you may be saying, what am I going with this? Just follow me. His charisma will be greater than Hitler. Statlin, it's that all the great world dictators or people who wanted world dominion, the beast, i.e. the Antichrist, will outdo them all. He will have total, absolute control over the entire world, not just one country or two countries. He would have absolute control over the entire world. His charisma would be unmatched. Remember Hitler, how charismatic he was? You know how we would just get the people fired up and people be screaming and hollering and so forth? The Antichrist, i.e. the beast, the man of sin, whichever title you want to give him, will be that times 100. But guess what? His policies will be based on a total dictatorship based on the ideology of communism and socialism and Marxism. 
He will use those political tools to have complete control over every individual in this world. But people won't pay attention to that. This man comes and saves the day, saves me, he saves me, he gives me food, he gives me this, he gives me that. And oh, he's so powerful. I like the way he talks. He's so charismatic. He's saving the day. Okay, what about his policies? Oh, oh, he wants us to worship him. No big deal. We'll worship him. We'll bow down. We'll get his mark. No big deal. It's a very big deal. Policies, the way I see it, in my opinion, is what matter more than a person's charisma and personality. So I just wanted to end the video on that. What do you guys think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel. God bless you all and see you again.